personally, I don't tend to clean my atomizers using any kind of a, an overnight kind of boil or use alcohol or, or anything like that. What I do is actually going to be tip number seven, or tip number eight, which we're going to get to right now. And that's going to be what's called the dry burn. And this is something that I use, and I must warn you before I talk to you about it, this can wreck an atomizer if it's working. Um, so it's something that you might actually pop an atomizer or two before you get this technique down right. But when you do, it can be a very effective and, and quick way of cleaning that atomizer. And what this means is basically you're going to burn off all of the e-liquid, but being careful not to burn out the atomizer. So to dry burn the atomizer simply means to use the atomizer until all of the liquid has been burnt off it, but not so long that it's burning without e-liquid on it. If you understand, you've got to find that perfect point and not allowing the coil and the atomizer to get so hot that it pops and it wrecks it. So uh, this atomizer still got lots of juice on it, but I will show you basically how you're going to start the process of dry burning. So, so this uh, atomizer still has lots of juice. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the tip and I'm simply going to push the button get it started and I'm going to blow instead of suck inside the atomizer. So again we're not going to overdo it, we're not going to go for 10 seconds straight, we're just going to go for 4 or 5 seconds, let it rest and then do it again. Let it rest and you see there's still a lot of vapor coming off the atomizer so we know that there's still quite a bit of liquid in the area of the atomizer so do it again okay so that was a third time and I can actually notice now in the bottom I can start to see the coil heating up and that's when you know you're at the right spot. So I'll try and show you here. If you look right in here, I'll just push the button. And you should be able to see. In there. It's hard to see. There we go. See a little bit of that orange glow. When you start getting that orange glow that you can actually see inside, that means that the atomizer is now without e-liquid. Because the e-liquid on top of it will prevent it from from glowing bright orange because when it glows bright orange that means it's all by itself the coil is just heating up. So when we have this bright orange we're simply going to continue to do what we were doing before but instead of doing big long four or five seconds with blowing it we're just going to do very quick little short bursts. So a quick blow as we're pushing the button very quickly. Just a few of them and again let it rest. You'd never want to you want to try and avoid overheating the atomizer by doing this too repetitively, but again, just and then again, let it rest. So I'm kind of taking you through pretty much the whole procedure of this. After you've done this, um, a good number of times you're going to notice that very little vapor is coming out of it. You're going to notice that the, there's a nice red glow. You can see the uh, coil heating up. Then it looks like your atomizer should be clean again. Um, so again, warned you before, I'm going to warn you one more time. It's very easy. If you run an atomizer uh, when there's no e-liquid on it and it gets too hot, um, and you run it for too long, it can pop and you can destroy a perfectly good atomizer if you're too aggressive with this procedure. So again, be wary of this. It, it works effectively. It's a great way to clean it where you don't have to wait for it to dry out like you do with some of the other methods I was talking about where you, you boil it in water and then you, you blow it out and then you have to wait 24 hours for, um, for it to dry out before you use it again. This one can kind of get the job done quickly but um, it's, it's a sensitive kind of, kind of thing. So that's tip eight, I believe. Tip nine, we'll say, is just simply don't over vape. 
and that means don't abuse your atomizer by sucking on it just constantly. Give it, you know, if you're going to take two or three toots, four toots even, that's fine, but give it a rest, let it sit for 30 seconds, 60 seconds, let it cool down a little. If you can touch your atomizer and it's smoking hot and it burns your fingers a little bit, uh, or even if it's just reasonably hot, you're, it's okay to be warm, it's going to get warm, but if it's so hot that you touch it and you're like, yowie, you know, that atomizer is getting a little bit hot, so give it a few minutes, rest it in between vapes. If you need to, if you're really jonesing and you just want to be, you know, double fist in the e-cigs, then go ahead and get a second e-cig and just have both of them going so you can just toot on one for a bit, grab the other one, toot on that and go back and forth between because uh, if you get an atomizer too hot, again, you can get some issues with it breaking early. Now my final tip, and this is going to be for a dead atomizer, and it's kind of a last resort tip that I've had about a 20% success rate on. So again, this is something that, it's just a last resort. Your atomizer's dead. Um, you, you've tried to clean it, you've dry burned it, nothing's happening. You click the button, you don't hear anything. It's just a dead, dead, dead atomizer. If you reach down inside and actually contact the coil, now the coil is gonna be underneath the bridge. Um, if you can't get to it, you might uh, wanna wiggle the bridge out of the way a little bit, but get to just inside the white plastic uh, holder for the coil. Get in there with the tip and just gently kind of wiggle the coil um, and kind of press on the coil. I mean, there's probably a 50-50 shot that you're just gonna, you know, cut the coil or wiggle it out of place and it's gonna be deader than dead. But I mean, my point is that if your atomizer's already dead, you're not losing anything by trying this. So again, kind of wiggle the coil and what I found is once in a while, if you touch the metal object you're using, you touch it to the inside of the atomizer housing, sometimes, occasionally I've been able to get a little puff or a pop, a little blue flame, a little blue spark will happen in here when I touch the coil with the side of the inside of the atomizer and sometimes this little puff will be followed by the atomizer actually starting to work again. And there's a few of them where only half the atomizer kind of started up again and the other half remained dead. And um, there have been a few that have kind of revived themselves. I don't understand how, but it happens. When I first started vaping, I'd only been vaping for three or four weeks. My, I only bought a single kit. I didn't buy any extra atomizers, which is just silly to do. But I mean, beginners don't understand often the need, the fact that, you know, atomizers are, are kind of like lighters. You know, if you're a smoker, you need them. You know, you, they're going to run out of juice, you know, and you don't want to be stuck there without a lighter. Same thing, you don't want to be stuck there without an atomizer. So I had only bought the one in the kit and it died. And I looked online and I found some of these other techniques. I tried to clean it. I tried to, you know, do this and that to it. It just, no sound, no nothing. Battery was good. Um, so I just j grabbed something and just started kind of poking. I just started poking in there. You know, what's the harm? It's already dead. And, um, and I heard this pop. I saw some, some life. I started wiggling a little more and suddenly the atomizer kind of came back to life. So again, this is not for to ever be used by an atomizer that's working, but if you have an atomizer that's completely dead and you've tried everything else, nothing's working, you're about to throw it in the trash, this is a pretty good technique. So the final point I want to make about atomizers before I go, I know this is a long video, I'm sure you're getting bored of seeing me, but final point I want to make is simply that one thing you need to understand as a uh, person who vapes is that atomizers are just in their nature going to fail eventually. Um, I've, 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 heard, I've personally had atomizers that have lasted three, four, five months. Not common. Most of my atomizers are between one and two months. A crappy one, one that I'd be unhappy with would be like two weeks, three weeks. But they're not the most expensive product in the world. It's much less expensive than traditional tobacco cigarettes. And I think the general consensus is uh, because of the nature that they're all day long getting hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. And they're very small and they're doing a lot of work. 
you know, it's the most integral part of the electronic cigarette. I mean, without, without the atomizer and the coil and the way that it works and the way it vaporizes, you know, you're talking about something that's going from room temperature to, I think it's 350 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that, pretty much instantly. Again, 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 again. So it's the kind of thing where, you know, you just have to kind of uh, accept that, that, you know, you want to have two, you want to have three or four atomizers on hand and you, and you want to be prepared that they are going to fail eventually. So it, it's, it's uh, just something to keep in mind. I just thought I'd throw that in there at the end. Anyway, hope you enjoyed my little video on atomizer tips. This has been Howie for CanadaVapes.com. I'll catch you later.